Most people in America are familiar with what is and isn't lawful underneath human resources concepts of fairness. What we know is that sometimes people do inventory and they invite people to volunteer so that they don't have to require all employees to participate. The real problem arises when you have a manager that is female and an employee that is male that participate together in inventory overnight into the early morning hours. Not only is this sort of a violation of our work in terms of how long a person should be on the job, but it can also look inappropriate to community citizens. That a female manager is using her management capabilities, her supervisor role, to keep someone on the job longer than they should be. At the same time, it can look inappropriate to people who are family and friends of the employee who doesn't get what's going on, it's not true, who can turn that conversational story into an improper publicity situation. And that is what some people do, some young people do, to participate in the ruining of a shop. As a manager who has worked around law enforcement, not at all, but as a manager who knows what can happen in a shop when improperly trained, unimportant, and if you will, emotional managers take over a facility, that sometimes corporations actually move those managers to different shops to see if they do differently in a different diversity of a community. At the same time, sometimes corporations are smart and they give that person a chance to behave themselves in a different facility or they check to see whether or not they taint that facility, making it impossible for people to stay on the job. Now it is possible that companies use one facility to train people and they use that facility because they like having that facility as the place that they send all their people. The problem is that sometimes they can go to the head of the local people who are left in charge of training people. In my experience, it is never wise to have a local manager, even the manager over a store, be the only trainer of an employee. The reason is that corporations have standards, and those standards can be bent and manipulated by a local manager or a local supervisor for their own whims and their own philosophies and their own form of management, as opposed to a corporate standard of what is and isn't appropriate for a manager to say, do, and literally behave on the job. In America, we do have professional standards. They are called benchmarks in every industry, and a benchmark in HR is appropriately handled by corporate trainers of a corporation and an international or national organization, especially if it's one that has multiple types of stores amongst a brand of, let's just say, shops. You see, similar stores often own other types of similar stores so that they can have a diversity of income for their corporation. It also allows them a diversity of buying and shopping and vending, if you will, through their retail outlets because then they can purchase more and distribute it across their organization. Most local shops are actually national brands that have a local facility. The difficulty we have is as a community finally starts to grow and finally starts to think about business development is that we can have a perversity in management and a lack of diversity in employees. We also have to be very careful of managers that are left too long in a location, in that a manager that has been at a location for too long, say in a national branded restaurant, can abuse and misuse local employees to the point that the employees decide to move on, and there's a constant stream of new employees coming through. As corporations, we are fully liable for what our management does because they are the salaried, usually, employees. That doesn't always get overtime, but here's what we know about subordinate or supervisor roles is that sometimes they mock in the full public time of their company store hours the actual manager who is full-time at a store. And that is inappropriate behavior allowed by a corporation because they do not send enough secret shoppers into a store with enough regularity 
and enough lack of, well, let's say, opinion to observe the behavior and the aberrant behavior of employees that are left to their own devices, left to self-leadership, left to a lack of communication. And I have been present in a shop when both a subordinate supervisor has mouthed off and joked about a upper manager and their time management for their own family, probably because that employee has virtually none. At the same time, I have seen a disparity in type of, not access to wealth per se, but perhaps a utilization of wealth in a way by a manager who has a quality vehicle versus a subordinate supervisor that chooses to have a noisemaker in a vehicle. Now, everyone has the right to purchase their own concept of transportation, but the point that I'm sort of making is that we have to make sure that our payments and our time management of employees is appropriate. We also have to make sure that our employees get moved around enough to other stores so that they are no longer participating in the abuse of community members or in the harassment, harangment, or hate crimes of a opportunistic oriented society that we live in where people like to perform pranks and they like to take advantage or they like to take liberties in areas of life that is none of their opportunity in life. Does that make sense to the people who are listening to our employment training or does that not stack up to what other people in HR and SHRM and other type of organizations are saying? You see, it only takes one, as we call bad apple, to ruin a barrel. But sometimes the barrel is full of bad apples because they hire them that way and they move them around to other stores, which may be great for in terms of finding people who work at certain locations. But what we don't always think about is how certain aspects of the job can dehumanize a employee to the point that they misbehave and they don't care about the corporation, they don't care about the hourly uh, time management of a company, or they're still too immature to do the work. Other times we have incredibly good customer service oriented people who do do the work, but they struggle sometimes with time management for the simple aspect of the fact that they don't have their own transportation. And when they don't have their own transportation, they're often on foot or riding public transportation that is not always a rocket science in terms of its mathematical calculations of when it will and will not rise on time at a corporate bus stop. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth. And if you want to get ahead in life, you learn who is the abuser in your store and you stay far away from them and you report them to a corporation because those people cause million dollar, sometimes billion dollar lawsuits. The million dollars hits in the corporation and the billion dollars goes across their vendor network that hear about the situation and don't like their name associated with that type of situation. So vendors might pull themselves from shelves if an employee of a local store is misbehaving inappropriately, mouthing off and misbehaving. We see that quite a lot in risk management business, but here's the biggest problem with the shitbags of a community who never got above a high school education, and no apologies for that. My late spouse was one of those, but she went on to a heck of a lot of education and has two degrees in nursing and other things based on my wage and my payment of those opportunities and her own hard, disciplined work, is that she ended up with two college degrees after she read the right, met the right person, who was namely me, who helped her to do that. But what I can say to you is that the liars of a community are always the liars of a community. They don't understand how other people make their wages and they don't exactly care until it allows them to feel some sort of sophistication, some sort of superiority. But the problem is that the liars of American America abuse people like you and me both in a shop and outside of a shop. And they do that by destroying productivity of other people because they don't understand that their hourly wage doesn't come anywhere close to what a salary wage or what a business manager or a business owner makes in revenue today. So let's be careful and let's be cautious that just because a person has lost a vehicle doesn't mean they don't know how to handle a vehicle. And just because a person has no vehicle doesn't mean that they're not the ace in the hole, the diamond in the rough within a corporation that needs to be raised up 
in a way that it is allowed in every way. What I find absolutely fascinating is the number of people who seem to come by five minutes after a man wakes up in a community from the constant abuse and harassment of a local facility that failed itself immeasurably. Now, I'm not going to get off track with God's request of me in terms of my interpretation of law, not at all in terms of my rights under the law, or in terms of your rights underneath the law, but when it comes to human resources, we absolutely know what is and isn't lawful and what is and isn't legal in a community in terms of a corporation's impact on the neighborhood in which, in which it's established, in which it's located, in which their employees live and reside, but more importantly, in which they serve, hopefully with corporate pride. 